Hello everyone, welcome to How to Tutors and today we'll be doing a poetry analysis of Fern Hill by Dylan Thomas. Stay tuned for more. About the poet Dylan Thomas, born in Swansea, Wales, Dylan Thomas is famous for his acutely lyrical and emotional poetry, as well as his turbulent personal life. The originality of his work makes categorization difficult. In his life, he avoided becoming involved with literacy, literary groups rather, or movements, and unlike other prominent writers of the 1930s, such as W.H. Auden and Stephen Spender, for example, he had little use for socialistic ideas in his art. Thomas can be seen as an extension into the 20th century of the general movement called Romanticism, particularly in its emphasis on imagination, emotion, intuition, spontaneity and organic form. Considered to be one of the greatest Welsh, po Welsh poets of all time, Thomas is largely known for his imaginative use of language and vivid imagery in his poems. Thomas began writing poetry as a child and was publishing by his teens. His notebooks from 1930 and 1934, when he was 16 to 20 years old, reveal the young poet's struggle with a number of personal crises. In his 1965, Dylan Thomas, Jacob Cork described them as related to love affairs, to industrial civiliza civilization, and to the youthful problems of finding one's identity. Revised versions of some of the notebooks, po uh, notebooks poems became available in 1934 in his first published volume of poetry, 18 poems to be uh, precise. Published in December 1934, it received little notice at first, but by the following spring, some influ influential newspapers and journals had reviewed it favorably. Summary of the poem, Carefree Nature of Childhood. The first three stanzas of the poem are dedicated to depicting the sort of joys and carefree abandoned children feel when they are young and untouched by the cares of the world. Thomas draws from his days at his aunt's farm at Fern Hill because these were some of the most idyllic memories he has. Childhood is a time when the young feel empowered, immortal, and capable of such great things. The poem suggests that childhood is the best time of life because the knowledge of death and corruption has not yet crept into the existence. Time is personified and initially acts as a benevolent caretaker in the first three stanzas. The changing nature of time. The last three stanzas of the poem offer the reader a more sobering view of childhood than that shown in the poem's beginning. This perspective depicts the end of childhood and the moment toward the reality of life. As a contrast to the first three stanzas, the last three stanzas depict time as a cruel master leading the child out of paradise. Let go through the poem. Now as I was young and easy under the apple boughs, about the lilliting house and happy as the grass was green. The night above the dingle starry, time let me hail and climb. Golden in the heydays of his eyes, and honored among wagons, I was prince of the apple towns. And once below a time, I lordly had the trees and leaves, trail with daisies and barley, down the rivers of the windfall light. And I was green and carefree, famous among the barns, about the happy yard and singing as the farm was home, and the sun that is young once only. Time let me play and be, golden in the mercy of his means, and green and golden I was huntsman and herdsman. The calves sang to my horn, the foxes on the hills barked clear and cold, and the Sabbath rang slowly, and the pebbles of the holy streams. All the sun long, it was running, it was lovely, the hay. Fields high as the house, the tunes from the chimneys, it was air, and playing, lovely and watery, and fire green as grass, and nightly under the simple stars. As I rode to sleep, the owls were bearing the farm away. All the moon long, I heard, blessed among stables, the night jars, flying with the ricks and the horses, flashing into the dark. And then to awake, and the farm, like a wanderer white, was the Jew, come back, the cock on his shoulder, it was all, shining it was Adam and Maiden, the sky gathered again, and the sun grew round that very day, so it must have been after the birth of the simple light, 
In the first spinning place, the spellbound horses walking warm out of the winding green t- uh, stable onto the fields of praise and honored among foxes and peasants by the gay house. Under the new made clouds and happy as the heart was long, in the sun born over and over, I ran my heedless ways. My wishes raced through the house, hey, hi, hey. And nothing I cared at my sky blue traits that time allows. In all his tuneful turning, so few and such morning songs, before the children green and golden follow him out of grace. Nothing I cared in the lamb white days, that time would take me. Up to the swallow thronged, loved by the shadow of my hand, in the moon that is always rising, nor that riding to sleep. I should hear him fly with the high fields and wake to the farm forever fled from the childless land. Or as I was young and easy in the mercy of his means, time held me green and dying, though I sang in my chains like the sea. Now let's go through the analysis. Dylan Thomas's Fern Hill is written in six stanzas. The first three stanzas depict the poet's experiences on his aunt's farm and the carefree nature of being young and innocent. The last three stanzas are a bittersweet commentary on the loss of innocence and the toil of having to grow up. Lines 1 to 2 Now as I was young and easy under the apple boughs, about the lilting house and happy as the grass was green. Now the speaker is an adult reflecting on his youth. Bow is a branch. Easy is carefree. Lilliting is singing merrily. Green, associated with youth, innocence, inexperience, and naivety. The child had no worries and no cares, hence the freedom he felt. The speaker describes his blissful delight when he was a child who enjoyed nature. He recalls how he enjoyed living in the arms of wild nature playing under the apple trees. Lines 3 to 4. The night above the dingle story. Time let me hail and climb. Dingle, valley of forest. Starry, the night sky was filled with stars. He focuses on its beauty as he is captured by its charm. Time is personified as a parent that allows him to do things. The reason for this freedom and happiness is that the child was not yet worried about time. Time is personified as the friend and ally of a child, unlike adults who are constantly pressed and tormented by time. Lines 5 to 6. Golden in the heydays of his eyes, and honored among wagons, I was a prince of the apple towns. Gold has connotations of wealth and beauty and autumn, leaves turning and sunlight and yellow flowers. Golden also has connotations of glory, heydays, prime, best days. These precious childhood days are the golden times during which time was merciful and kind. Honored among wagons, he was honored by all the inhabitants of the area. He was the prince of the apple towns, and the world of that farm was his dominion. Metaphor, he compares himself to a prince. The metaphor continues in line 7. And once below a time, I lordly had the trees and leaves, trail with daisies and barley, down the rivers of the windfall light. This is a metaphor. Metaphor compares himself to a lord. This place made him feel like royalty. Windfall, an apple blown down from a tree or a large amount of money arriving unexpectedly. So it's fortune or luck. Metaphor again, light is compared to a river filled with riches. The landscape around him is rich with flowers, fields of barley and rivers of light. It is indeed a paradise and he felt like he was a prince and a lord ruling his paradise. Lines 10 to 12 And as I was green and carefree, famous among the barns, about the happy yard and singing as the farmer's home. He continues to revisit his happy childhood in a series of flashbacks. He recalls how naive, innocent, and inexperienced he was, but also how he lived without any worries or cares. As an adult, he thinks he was green as a child. Being naive or green is a small cost of being happy and carefree. Unlike children, adults are 
careworn, unhappy and struggle daily to make ends meet. Instead of being famous worldwide, the child was famous among the barns where animals are kept and rural festivities were held. He is famous among country people and he's the master of the animal world. Arm was his home. He had a sense of belonging. Also, he was oblivious to the adult world. Lines 12 to 14. In the sun that is young once only, time let me play and be, golden in the mercy of his means. The sun that is young once only. Time is personified. We are all at the mercy of time because we cannot stop time. And as he was young, he felt everything around him was just as young, including the sun, under which he played freely and merrily. These times are a golden and precious gift that time gave him out of, his, out of its kindness and mercy. Lines 15 to 16. And green and golden, I was huntsman and herdsman. The calves sang to my horn. The foxes on, his, uh, on the hills barked clear and cold. This is a metaphor. The metaphor. In the metaphor, he compares himself to a hunter and herdsman. The child imagines that he was the hero. Sometimes he was a huntsman, blowing his horn, going after wild animals and foxes and hunting them, the way first human beings did. Other times he was a herdsman or shepherd, tending his cattle. Line 17 to 18, and the Sabbath rang slowly in the pebbles of the holy streams. Sabbath, the biblical allusion, creates a mood of reverence, deep respect. Rang first to, refers to church bells. Pebbles of the holy streams, it is as if the very streams sing a song of praise to God in the sound of the water running over the pebbles. In the beauty and glory of his rural childhood, he felt like worshipping in the temple of nature, and the holy altar was the water stream whose pebbles noise felt like the hymn in his ears. Lines 19 to 21. All the sun long it was running. It was lovely. The hay fields high as the house. The tunes from the chimneys, it was air. The sun represents the passing of time. Note the unusual word order in line 19, which creates a personification. The child is still speaking, gushing on his past memories. He is still that playing innocent child who has no cares and no worries. The lovely sun is now running as autumn days are shorter. The harvest is done. The haystacks stand in piles as high as house. This is a summary. The chimneys do not send smoke out in the air, but music that he liked. Lines 22 to 24, and playing lovely and watery, and fire green as grass, and nightly under the simple stars. His playing was never interrupted, even when he was all drenched in rain and the days are cold. Even the fire looked green, his eyes like the green grass, and playing lovely and watery, and fire green as grass. And nightly under the simple stars, his playing is never interrupted, even when he was all drenched in rain. And the days are cold, even the fire looked green, his eyes like the green grass. Lines 25 to 27. As I rode to sleep, the owls were burying the farm away. All the moon long I heard, blessed among stables, the night jaws. Flying with the ricks and the horses, flashing into the dark. As the child drifts off to sleep, he imagines that the entire farm is carried away into dreamland by the owls whose call is heard in the night. He heard the singing of birds like the night jars which made of the which made of the stable their homes. In the darkness, the farm is no less noisy than in the day, and no less bright as he can see the eyes of horses flashing in the darkness and hear the singing and noises of nightlife. In short, he felt blessed, happy and free. At the end of stanza 3, the child's symbolic sleep ends in a flashing light in the dark. This flash is the light of awareness and signals, the loss of paradise, freedom and innocent bliss. Lines 28 to 30, and then to awake and the form, like a wanderer, white with the dew, Come back and cock on his shoulder. It was all shining. It was Adam and Maiden. 
and introduces a change. The walking child in stanza 4 is symbolic of maturity. The farm, like a wanderer white, is personification. He wakes up to the sound of the rooster crow. With the dew, time has passed. It is now winter. Winter is symbolic of the end of his childhood and innocence because in winter everything dies. So it is a fitting um, symbol. Shining, the light of the morning sun reflects off the dew that has set the dew reflects off the dew has settled on the leaves and ground. He feels that time has betrayed him. This betrayal is indicated by the placing of the cock on his shoulder. A cock is another name for a rooster and is an allusion for, to the betrayal of Jesus in the Christian faith. A rooster crows when Jesus is betrayed in the Bible. Lines 28 to 30. And then to awake and the farm, like a wanderer, white with the dew. Come back, the cock on his shoulder. It was all. Shining, it was Adam and Maiden. The reference to Adam and his maiden refers to the Garden of Eden and the creation of man. He suggests that his time at Fernhill is comparable to Adam and Eve's time in the garden, before the loss of innocence. It is idyllic and beautiful and free. He was very happy there. The adult world is not as carefree as that of childhood, and the speaker experiences a sense of regret and loss as he moves from one to the other. Lines 31 to 33. The sky gathered again, and the sun grew round that very day. So it must have been after the birth of the simple light, the sun rises up in the sky. Sun grew round. The sun was shining brightly that very day. He remembers this day as it was that it was of great significance to him, also symbolic of his growing up. He was no longer a child. The birth of the simple light, birth of the world, the first light in Eden. Lines 34 to 36. In the first spinning place, the spellbound horse is walking warm out of the winding green stable onto the fields of praise. Spinning place, the earth like the earth rotates, so it spins. The winding green stable, this is on onomatopoeia, it creates the sound of a horse, brings the scene to life. As the sun shines, all creatures wake up to glorify nature and praise its beauty and abundance. The farm horses leave their stable with the birth of light and go to the fields to join the rest of the natural world. In a prayer or hymn addressed to the farm, this creates a mood of reverence. Lines 37 to 38, and honored among foxes and peasants by the gay house. Under the new made clouds and happy as the heart was long, he felt honored like royalty. Peasants, a large bird with a rounded body and long tail that spends a lot of time on the ground and is often shot for sport and food. He felt as if the foxes, the peasants and other animals were his friends and they loved him and honored him as they wandered around the happy and merry house of Fernhill. Gay, to be happy or playful, the house was personified to reflect how the child felt about the house. It was lively and happy and filled with merriment and joys. New, the birth of the world. Lines 39 to 40. In the sun born over and over, I ran my heedless ways. The speaker recalls with a sense of regret and intense nostalgia that he was in the sun born over and over. I ran my heedless ways when he was young. He admits that he was heedless as a child and how the farm gave him all that he needed and made him feel complete. Lines 41 to 43. My wishes race through the house high hay, and nothing I cared at my sky blue trait. That time allows, in all his tuneful turning, so few and such morning songs. He wishes His wishes seem to be fulfilled as quickly as the stacks of hay grew high in the house. The sun bathed him with its warmth and light, and he felt free looking at the blue sky. The sky, sky blue traits. Activities. He was too preoccupied to care that time was passing by and did not realize that his childhood paradise would end. He felt time is kind and loving and he could hear its morning music and singing. Lines 41 to 43. Before the children green and golden follow him out of grace. Children green and golden, children who were still young and naive, they did not have any worry and were in complete harmony with time. The child speaker talks proudly and happily about his adventures in Fern Hill Farm. 
grace indicates a fall from grace or innocence and suggests that he has moved from a state of perfect union to an awareness of reality. The embrace of reality brings with it regret and a loss of freedom. Follow him. This is symbolic of Adam and Eve leaving Eden. His carefree world has been left behind. Lines 46 to 47. Nothing I cared in the lamp white days. That time would take me up to the swallow thronged loft by the shadow of my hand. The speaker returns to the present. The child becomes an adult and leaves behind the innocence of his past. Nothing I cared emphasizes his complete freedom in his childhood. Lamb white days, a symbol of innocence and purity. Emphasizes his carefree attitude as a child. This is fitting because the lamb is already seen as innocent. Now including the white there just adds to the sense of purity. Time would take me. Time is personified. He's aware of time even though he's unaware of anything else. The time is guiding him and leading him until he loses the carefree attitude of the child. Up to the swallow thronged loft, a high place full of swallows, birds. Shadow, something negative and pleasant is introduced. Stanza 6, lines 48 to 51. In the moon that is always rising, know that riding to sleep. I should hear him fly with the high fields and wake to the farm forever fled from the childless land. He felt that all nights are bright with the moon, which is always rising. Know that riding to sleep, I should hear him fly with the high fields. Literally, even when he's going home after nightfall, he could hear the swallows flying high over the fields, which are also high as they sit on the hill. Figuratively, how he goes to sleep without worries and without cares. All he thinks of is to wait for the morning so he could have another playful and joyful day. And to wake to the farmland, to the farm forever fled. Maturity and the chains of adulthood came all too quickly for the speaker, and the speaker laments the last days of his youth. He accepts that once childhood is left behind, there is no going back unless the tool of creating is used. Only then can an individual tap into the joy and freedom experienced in the childhood. And even then, the joy is brief. Lines 52 to Maturity and the chains of adulthood came all too quickly for the speaker, and the speaker laments the last days of his youth. He accepts that once childhood is left behind, there is no going back unless the tool of creating is used. Only then can an individual tap into the joy and freedom experienced in the childhood. And even then, the joy is brief. Lines 52 to 54. Oh, as I was young and easy in the mercy of his means, time held me green and dying, though I sang in my chains like the sea. Oh, a cry of regret, sorrow. This is the turning point at which the child speaker disappears and adult speaks into, steps into. Tell us about the experience, or the experience rather, of waking up from the dream of childhood memories. The farm is no longer crowded with the laughter and noise of playing children. It becomes childless, that is barren and fallow. He starts to feel the sting of time, and now time is long. And how time now time is no longer kind or gentle but is leading him to the end which the child was unaware of. Deep inside, he feels he is still that green, naive child, yearning to relive his childhood's pleasures. But he is no longer that child, as he has lost his freedom and is now burdened with worries and cares. Time and experience have put him in bonds, chains, and he is their prisoner. The simile, like the sea, shows the vastness of his feelings. It also ha it also ha but also the depth of his despair. Lines 52 to 54. Oh, as I was young and easy in the mercy of his means, time held me green and dying, though I sang in my chains like the sea. The lightness, ease and joys of the days of innocence are gone forever and never to return. In their place, the speaker now, an adult, is, li is living through the harshness and hardships of the days of experience and awakening. The use of the verb sang creates hope. The losses can be captured through his memories. The green and golden joy of childhood and the shadowy sorrow of maturity become the joy of art, poetry, 
In this manner, the loss to time is not total. It is possible to use art to recapture the happiness of innocent youth. The themes in this poem. First one is nostalgia. The sense of nostalgia is intense in the poem Fernhill. The longing to return to a state of innocence and security is a common thread throughout the entire work. The speaker regrets that he had to grow up and leave a state of grace to embrace sadness, exile, and the separation from nature. He likens the separation to the fall from grace experienced by Adam and Eve in the Bible. The speaker looks back on his time at Fernhill and realizes that he was very lucky to have had these experiences. Experiences. He urges the reader to try and regain some part of what was lost. The second theme, time. Time is presented as a character in Fern Hill, as real as any other. In the context of this poem, time acts as a playmate who allows the speaker to hail and climb in blissful ignorance of reality and the adult world. When the speaker is a child, time works in his best interest. This alliance does not last because in the end, time eventually throws him out of paradise. The theme of time revolves around the message that time is always the one in control and everyone feels the loss of time when they reach maturity and enter the adult world. Instead of feeling free like he did when he was a child, the speaker now feels chained and weighed down by responsibilities. Theme 3. Harmony and the Wonder of Nature The speaker's childhood joy is closely connected to playing outside. The poem suggests the real jo- that real joy comes from a sense of connection with the natural world. To be young and innocent is to be one with nature. Nature is a place filled with wonder, peace and harmony. As the young speaker explored the landscape, the personified elements of nature seem to be his playmates. The speaker plays a role in the environment he visits. He is both hunter and shepherd. He is not actually killing animals here. His joy stems from the fact that he is part of nature and the landscape, rather than apart, apart from it. Adults are incapable of accessing the sense of peace and harmony that comes from being one with nature. The fourth theme, the presumptive presumptive nature of the young. The wonders and joys of youth are represented as fleeting and the speaker suggests that there is a type of divinity that surrounds the innocence of this time in everyone's life. Time and maturity taint innocence and bring regret. The speaker ponders that children do not appreciate what they have when they are young. Children are naive and do not often consider such weighty matters as life and death. Because of this naivety, the speaker recalls childhood and most blissfully happy time in in, uh, childhood, the most blissful happy time in anyone's life. He is saddened that every child must inevitably come to realize that not every day will be happy. The fifth theme, the end of childhood grace. The poem implies that when children grow up, they lost the grace of childhood and its joys. The Christian concept of grace is to experience God's love. For the speaker, childhood best represents such an experience, and the earth and the end of childhood rather is thus a painful yet inevitable fall from grace. The references to the Garden of Eden propel parallels childhood as akin to the Garden of Eden. As people age, they lose their grace, just like Adam and Eve lost theirs. Just as Adam and Eve were kicked out of Eden, the speaker wakes to the farm forever fled from the childless land. It is as if one day the speaker woke up, no longer a child, and all the happiness has has disappeared from the world. The structure of the poem. This poem consists of six stanzas, each comprising nine lines. There is a strict syllabic count in each line, which is repeated in each stanza. 14, 14, 9, 6, 9, 14, 14, 7, 9. Despite the strict syllabic count or rhythm, there is no specific form to this poem. The poem is song-like in its rhythm. The poem can be divided into two parts. The first three stanzas are related to the poet's experience as a child and the last three stanzas focus on the awakening in the child which signifies the loss of innocence. This would be useful when discussing your poetry essay.
the tone. A reflective tone throughout the poem, he indicates the transition from child to adult as well as the interactions with time. The tone is joyful, fervent, emotional, aesthetic, rhapsodic. It is a hymn of praise to youth and innocence. In the final stanza, the tone changes to one of melancholy at the lost and irreverse, irretrievable days of childhood. Another tone is nostalgia. There's a lot of nostalgic moments as he often reflects and goes back to his childhood memories right guys that is it for fern hill by dylan thomas please don't forget to like share comment and subscribe and let us know what poetry analysis you'd like to do what you'd like us to do next see you next time